Hello everyone and welcome back to Jack Scraps. Thanks for joining me today for another design team project for Country Craft Creations. For today's project, I'll be using the SOAR collection that's exclusive to Country Craft Creations and I'll have this link down below as well as the supply list that I used from Country Craft Creations. And like the last project that I created using this collection, I made a cut file and pattern bundle and it will be free for 24 hours and that will be linked down below for you as well now let me show you what i've created so here is the pop-up photo box and this measures four and three eighths inches wide by four and three eighths inches tall and it is one inch deep on the front we have the gorgeous soar paper collection I've added some florals that I had in my stash here. I fussy cut out some of the butterflies from the collection and added them on top. Even have some little greenery here and there. And added this cute little tag that I had and stamped love you on it. This is a perfect little gift for someone and I just love the size of it that it just fits right into your hands. On the sides of the box, you'll see two thumbnails that will help Hold on to the box as you lift the lid and inside you will see the photo box album where it has multiple panels to house your photos. So this is one side real quick and I'll show you the other side and then we'll go through it in detail. It is attached to the base of the box as well so this is all one piece. So what we have here are eight panels that are accordion folded and they are to house your photos. These are four by four photo areas. For this one, I added a little strip to make a belly band and put in one of my photo mats that you can get free from my shop as well. I'll have that link down below for you. This is a three and a fourth by three and a fourth size. For this one, I fussy cut out this large butterfly, attached it on three sides, and made it a nice little tuck spot for a 3x3 photo mat. At the bottom here, we have a nice little pocket where I've tucked in a little tag that I created. I stamped happiness on this little baby tag. Isn't that so cute? <laughs> and I put in another 3 and a fourth by 3 and a fourth photo mat right here at the end. I just love having the variety of not only places to just put your photo, but also places for interaction. We'll turn this around and look at the back side. At the top, we have a three by four journal card that says with brave wings, she flies and it is a side pocket. This is a three by four journal card that I cut down. So here we have our four by four photo mat areas with this beautiful paper. How nice of a border is that going to make? Here I created another belly band using one of the cut apart ephemera pieces. Inside we have a two and a fourth by three and a fourth photo mat. And if you noticed on my cover, we were missing a little area. What I did was cut that out as is folded it in half, and now it's like a little booklet. Super cute. Here we have some more four by four photo areas. Here is another area that you can tuck a photo up underneath this be your own kind of beautiful. And at the bottom, we have a little pocket where you can tuck in photos. And I just put in a three by three photo mat. This project was so fun and easy to make. You could do it in one day. I do have a tutorial following this portion of the video and I hope that you stick around to create one with me. And if you can't stay, don't forget to bookmark it and come back later. But thank you for joining me this far and don't forget to like and comment so I know what you think of my pop-up photo box. I am loving it. Okay, let's get started with the tutorial. 
To put the photo box together, the first thing we're going to do is work on the base of the box. So that's what I have here. And I did create a pattern and sizing guide for this project so that you would have it. It also has all of the measurements in it as well. So for those that have a cutting machine and those without, you would be able to use this document as it will have the pattern and where to score and the sizing and all of that, okay? So what I have done is cut out my pieces using Cricut and Cricut Design Space. This is the bottom of the box, as I mentioned earlier, and I'm going to work on the inside of my box. The first thing I want to do is add my pattern paper to the inside of my box bottom. That requires one four and an eighth by four and an eighth piece of pattern paper. And then it also requires four pieces that are seven eighths inches wide by four and an eighth to go on the inside of each of these. Now what that does is provide a very small border around it. I didn't want a whole lot of the white paper showing through. I just really wanted it to be an accent. So that's how I created it. If you prefer an eighth of an inch border on all sides, you're going to need to cut this down. I only did it to where there was like 1 16th of an inch all the way around. So I'm going to glue these pieces on like this. Okay. So that's how we're going to get started with the bottom of the box. Now, one of the things that are a little difficult is because I used white cardstock, you can't really see the score lines that my Cricut Maker made. So what I'm going to do is put this in my scoreboard and score at one on all sides, just to kind of make those score lines a little bit more defined. That's much better, I can see those now. So I'm going to put this with my tabs up at the top and my tabs at the bottom. Okay, now that that piece is in, we're going to go ahead and glue our sides together. So let's burnish all of our score lines. Now to ensure that there is nothing overhanging on the edge, you can trim your tabs on each end. And you would go like this, just make a little angle cut to the corner. You can do both sides or just one of them. It's up to you to make it look like that. You only need a little bit off. Okay. Now we can take our next tab, add our adhesive, and we're just going to repeat that same process for each tab. Just make sure you square them off on the corners And now we have the bottom of our box together. We're going to take our pattern pieces and adhere those to the inside all the way around, okay? It is a little more difficult to do it this way, but the reason we do it is so that we can hide the tabs. And then I try to line these two pieces up together so that they are even all the way across as best I can. It's not going to matter too much. It is the inside of your box and it won't get scrutinized. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, so there is our box bottom all together. Now, if you want, you could add pattern paper to the outside of the box. I would first make sure that your lid fit, and if it is loose, you could add the pattern paper. If it's a snug fit, then I would not add additional pattern paper to the outside, okay? So we'll wait to see how that feels once we get the top made and put that on there. Okay, so let's set this aside. We're going to bring out the lid. For the lid of our box, you're going to need some pattern paper to decorate. You'll need one piece that measures four and a fourth by four and a fourth. This does have two cuts in the pattern paper. So I highly recommend that you go out and pick up the pattern and sizing guide for this project so that you know exactly where to place your cuts. You'll also need four pieces of pattern paper to go on the sides of our box top. These measure seven eighths by four and a quarter as well. So one topper, four strips. For the base of our lid, you're going to need one piece that measures six and three eighths by six and three eighths. But as you can see here, it also has the cuts for the center of our box. You're also going to need one of these little tabs, I guess. I'm not really sure what to call this. <laughs> this measures two and a quarter by three eighths of an inch wide. I've scored at a half an inch and one on both sides of the little tab, if you will. This is also included in the pattern and cut files. So you can use your cutting machine to cut all this out for you, or you can use the patterns if you don't have a cutting machine. Now I'm going to, again, use my scoreboard to just go over these score lines. Cricut does a fine job, but I just don't think it goes deep enough for me. And I am going to go ahead and fold on all of my score lines and burnish them. I think it'll just be easier in the end. Now let's take our tab and we're going to fold and burnish on the score lines. You can really just do this with your fingers. It's so small. <laughs> And actually, if you don't want to do this part, you don't have to, but it does make a really nice decorative element on the top of our boxes. So I hope that you do it because it's going to be fun. <laughs> the first thing we want to do with our tabs at the top and our tabs at the bottom. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of a dry run here. I want to make sure that the lines in my pattern paper line up with the top of my box. So on the inside of the top lid, we're going to take our little tabby piece, we're going to put one end into the holes, okay? Take the other end, put in the other hole. So you have about a fourth of an inch here Go ahead and pull those through. And then you want to make sure you have that kind of centered. You should have plenty of room there and there. Okay. And now what I think I'll do is go ahead, take my pattern piece as well and put it through the tab before I actually glue it down. Now this might be a little difficult, but I'd rather do it this way to make sure everything's lining up, then glue it down and find out my lines are, my cut lines are not lining up, if that makes sense. So this might be a little tricky. I'm going to take this tab, put it through the one cut, take the other tab, put it through the other cut, just like we did a moment ago. So you can see there. And then still make sure this is flat.
pull it all the way through. I'm gonna make sure these are a little bit more even here. There we go. And how's that look? Oh my goodness, fabulous. Perfect. <laughs> if I do say so myself. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to kind of fold this down and hold it so that I can put this underneath and add some adhesive to it. And we'll glue each side down one at a time. Okay. As you can see there, we have our spacing. That looks pretty good. And then burnish it really good. Now we can add on the sides of our panels. Let's see. I did not cut these out in any particular way. So I'll just see how they look the best. Okay, now we have all of our pattern pieces on. We can go ahead and add adhesive to our tabs and do the same thing we did with the bottom of the box, align our corners to create the lid. However, before we do that, there is an optional piece that you can include. When I was making my prototype, I actually punched holes on the sides and it would made it so much easier to get the lid off so I'm going to go ahead and do that again here. And of course, you could have punch your holes first in the white cardstock and then in the pattern and then line it up so that you have a nice white edge around the hole. But I didn't want to bother with that. It was just too much and this is a nice, easy project. So let's keep it that way. <laughs> so I'm gonna flip this over and this might be me being OCD or whatever, but I'm going to find the center and make a little tick mark just so I know about where I put my hole that the sides will be about even. So let's see if this lines up. Yeah. Okay, it's really just a precaution because when I put this in there, actually right here where this piece is, there's a line, I don't know if you can see it, but it's right there, that's the center. You probably have one in your punch as well. So I'm going to take that and line it up. See how that is, line that up. and then make my punch. You could then take the piece that you cut out line up your two tick marks hold that in place Grab your pencil, make another tick mark, kind of going around it, just to help as another guide, just trying to give you guys some ideas. So I'm going to cut right on the inside of that and hope for the best, right? That's all we can do. Yeah, I like that. It 
It's just nice to have a little area to put your thumb and your finger while you hold the bottom of the box and then open the lid. You'll see how we're doing that in a moment. Let's go ahead and make our little diagonal cuts. Now I didn't do that on the SVG file in case some people don't like to do that. I like to give you options because I don't always do it either. So, all right, now we can add our adhesive to our tabs and put these all together. Again, I'm squaring them off. Okay, so there is our box top. Let's see how these look when we put them together. Yeah, see, perfect, perfect. I love it. I may put pattern paper on the inside. Okay. Now that the box is made, let's set this aside and we'll work on the inside piece. So as you saw by now in the project reveal, when we lift the lid, we have an accordion fold out that occurs where our photos are going to be housed. So that's the part we're going to make right now. For the accordion panels, because I'm using my Cricut Maker, I actually have the long cardstock that is 12 by 24. So I created SVG cut files so that those that have the 12 by 24 card stock could easily cut out the two pieces that they need to create their panels. So that's what I've done here. Now, when I was making my prototype, I cut my eight and a half by 11 paper down to four and eighth inch strips. And then I scored at four and an eighth. And when I had leftover at the end of the paper, I took those two pieces and I overlapped them. And I overlapped them one and three eighths inches so that I would still get a four and one eighth inch panel. When I did that, it took two pieces of eight and a half by 11. So you can create this without using a cut file, but I did create one that has a two panel component. So it would be this much right here, two panels, one, two, and a half inch tab. So then you could use that half inch tab and connect your next two panel piece on there. On a 12 by 12, you can cut out the two panel with tab two times. So two on one 12 by 12. You would need four and a half pieces of 12 by 12 cardstock to do it that way. So there are two options for you. But as I mentioned, I'm going to be using the one that I used for the 12 by 24 cardstock. As you would with either of the methods I mentioned for the eight and a half by 11 or 12 by 12, you would take your half inch hinge or tab, add adhesive to it, and then add the two pieces together. So you're just going to overlap these two pieces by that half inch mark. Sometimes it's easier to do this in the scoreboard. The only thing you want to make sure of is that you have a four and one eighth inch panel after overlapping the two pieces. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Once you have all of your pieces connected, the next thing you're going to do is a zigzag fold or an accordion fold. So I'm gonna fold back on the first one and I'm going to burnish, I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. Fold down 
and you're just going to repeat that process all the way to the end. Now that we have our accordion piece ready, I wanted to talk to you about decorating. With our piece that opens up as we look at it, we're going to take this part right here and we're going to glue that onto the inside of our lid. So here's our lid and this is going to have adhesive and get glued down into our lid. Now you can add pattern paper here on the inside, but I wanted to make sure you knew not to add pattern paper to the top, only to the bottom part of it, okay? So that's number one. The next thing I wanted to point out that there are two options on how you can actually put this into our box. Okay, so one, we're going to glue this and that's going to be together. For the bottom, you can let it be loose in the box and come out of the box, or you can take the bottom piece, which would be here, and you can add your adhesive here and glue that panel into the bottom of the box. And then that way it becomes all one piece kind of hard to show you <laughs> but it becomes one piece like this I think I'm going to do it to where it lifts up out of the box to make it a little bit easier to look at but you can definitely glue yours to the inside of the box if that's how you want yours to be presented I'm telling you that because we're going to be adding our paper onto the panels and decorating them a little bit. And I wanted you to know which panels you needed to decorate and which ones you didn't. Now to decorate the panels, you're going to need a piece of pattern paper that is four by four. And again, it will give you that nice little border. If you want a larger border, just cut this down. You can do a mixture of pattern paper and just solid cardstock. However you want to decorate your panels, you can. So you don't have to put pattern paper on it if you don't want to. You can do one four by four and a smaller panel on the inside as well, maybe a three by three to give it some dimension. You can add flat embellishments to this as well. Don't use bulky embellishments at all because it will just add bulk to this being in our box. So there's some helpful um, decorating tips. I'm going to do mine off screen. For the cover, I have laid out a little bit of a row of flowers here. There's four flowers and I put in two leaves and I have one little tag that says, love you. I fussy cut out these butterflies to go on top. Now I laid this out to see if I liked how the placement was and I do. And so I didn't want to remove it all and lose the placement. So I thought I would come on and let you kind of see how I just put this together. Now the butterflies are easy. I can figure those out later. But I really didn't want to mess with the placement of the flowers. So I'm gonna do my best to try and glue these down without moving everything too much. These are just flowers that I had in my stash and these are the Prima flowers from the Luna collection, which Country Craft Creations carried when that collection came out. Okay, let's add our butterflies to these flowers first. Just using some foam adhesive. I 
attaching those to the flower, but I really wanted it to be elevated a little bit. So I'm also going to put some foam on the tail end here. These do come off the sides of the box, but I just love that look. So for the center, when we put this through, we had them kind of standing straight up with these two little uh, flaps here. I did trim these down about an eighth of an inch off of each side to start with. And then I even kind of started to round them a little bit. I wanted it to be more consistent with the height of what I was putting down. So don't be afraid to cut these down or curl them or do whatever you need to do to make it look right. You don't want this to be so high that it's way above everything else. You want it to be higher than these that are placed down underneath it, but not too high. Also for the butterfly, what you could do is cut this in half and put half of the butterfly here on this piece and half on the other piece. And I actually was going to do that, but I really kind of just like the idea of the whole butterfly being there. So I'm going to go with that. Yeah, that's still too tall. So, so in the end, I'm probably cutting off about a fourth of an inch. See, that's more like it. Yeah, that's much better. I love it. Okay, I have gone through my panels and I picked out the decorative pieces for them. So I thought what I would do is just run through what I'm using and then glue everything off camera. So I'll show you for the first one here. I'm using this Desert Cactus cardstock from Country Craft Creations. It's the My Colors. Again, I love this color for this collection. This measures four and an eighth by four and an eighth. It is the full size of this panel. Next, I cut down one of the four by six journal cards to be four by four. And that's going to go up here. For this, on the front of the collection, at the bottom is all of the cut apart ephemera pieces. They're just smaller. So I cut all of those out, made an offset for some of them, and I'm using one of these pieces and I'm going to glue that up here across the top. So from there, I cut some four by four pieces of the different pattern paper. For this one, I initially cut out this four by four piece. Then I'm going to add this border piece, which is four by one to make a little belly band. I thought that would be cute. And I'm going to put in one of my photo mats that's three and a fourth by three and a fourth. So that will go underneath here, just to kind of break up the sizing of photos. Left that at four by four. For this one, I fussy cut out one of these large butterflies. I'm going to glue this down on three sides and then the three by three photo mat can just be tucked into the butterfly. I think that's gonna be so cute. We have a four by four there. For this one, the back piece is a four by four. I, again, I'm using a border piece. This is four by one. I took one of the cut apart ephemera pieces and this little tag that I stamped happiness on. Put a little of the jute twine in there to make it look like a tag. And then I'm going to add this three and a fourth by three and a fourth inch photo mat. And I think that will be super cute in there. On the back side, what I've done is cut out some more of the desert cactus as a four by four. I'm using one of the three by four journal cards here. This was a three by four journal card and I cut it down. And this final size is about two and a half, a little bit over by a little bit over than three and a half. 
all I did was kind of cut it down into the gold portion of that card. So that'll be my insert. We have another four by four here, here, four by four in the back. I'm going to take this cut apart piece, glue it on two sides, again, making it a belly band. Even though it's smaller than the four by four, I just still think that'll be cute. Then you could tuck in a two and a fourth by three and a fourth inch photo. Again, just giving some variety to the sizes of photos that this will hold. We have a four by four here and there. Here we have another four by four, and then I am using another one of those small cut aparts. Be your own kind of beautiful. I'm going to glue this up here at the top and kind of glue it on the top and side and make it a little tuck spot. For the last panel, again, we have our four by four in the background there. Oh no, some ink got on there. I cut down some of the pattern paper to be four by one to use as a little pocket. I cut this off of the front of the cover. So it was right here in the corner. Cut them off together, folded it over and made it like a little booklet. How cute is that, right? <laughs> and then I'm inserting a three by three photo mat behind that. So that's how my panels are going to be laid out. Okay, let me show you the other side. You can do more with this if you wanted to put something on each of the four by four panels, but I want this to be for photos mainly. So that's why I didn't add something to every panel. Now, I think what I'm going to do is glue these pieces down so we can together glue this into the box. Make sure we have this going in the right direction. That's why I put an X and an arrow on it so I knew I was going in the right direction. And then I'm going to go ahead and add this. Now remember this bottom piece is the same size as the panel. So those should line up. I'm gonna make sure I put it before my score line so that this will fold really easily. This is going to be up in the lid, so I really wouldn't expect anyone to add photos to this. It's more just a decorative piece. So when we get ready to attach these two pieces, you want to make sure that you have your lid going in the right direction with your pattern as well as with your thumb notches. I have them on the left and right side. I'm going to go ahead and add my adhesive. I'm going to turn this over and lay this down in there. The lid is four and a fourth. So you should have about an eighth of an inch border. Okay, so I have my panel all connected to my lid. This is four and three eighths inches wide, not four and a fourth. So you have a nice eighth of an inch border all the way around. And initially I said that I wasn't going to attach my bottom piece to the inside of my box, but I have since changed my mind. I am going to do that. So we do the same thing. We add our adhesive to the back and just attach it to the inside of the box. And actually I'm going to take this, not that it matters, and flip this around. So 
so I can see. Since I have patterned paper at the bottom, it's going to make it a lot easier to see where to place my panel because I'm just going to cover it up. Much easier than putting that onto white. Let's see, do I got it? Yep, that looks good. I'm gonna take this out. Now I probably wouldn't have put a pocket here if I would have known initially I was going to just go ahead and glue this down. So you might want to think about that when you go to figure out what you want on each of the panels. I probably would have put it on one of these other ones, but it'll still be functional. So it actually might be easier to put your photos in it than if you had to glue it down. All right, so I'm just gonna pop that back in there. I actually moved the little booklet up here. So you have your nice little box, you lift the lid, and then you have your pop-up photo box. <laughs> I love it, it's so fun. I love that this is compact. I'm loving the four by four size. It's a nice little gift, just fits right in your hand. Hope you all have enjoyed this project as well as the tutorial. Let me know down below in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts. And I hope you give it a try. And if you do, please share it on Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creation. I would love to see your design. Thanks a lot, everyone. And I'll see you next time.